and welcome to a new video. Today I'm here to do my 2019 reading year in review. So in one word, the way I can describe 2019 as a reading year uh, is gonna be a failure. So I didn't read much at all. Uh, it went really badly, <laughs> mostly because I started working but the main culprit might be the, the fact that I discovered podcasts. I listened to the Good Place podcast, uh, the official one by Mark, uh, hosted by Mark Evan Jackson, the actor. I went down the hill, I discovered so many new podcasts. I listened to the one hosted by David Tennant, I listened to the Waterstones one now, I listened to the Jonathan Van Ness podcast, just all of the, like... John Green's Anthropocene Review and John Green and Hank's Green Podcast and Hank Green's and Catherine's Podcast. So, as you can tell, uh, I have like a podcast for each day of the week. Uh, I try to have extras for the week. It's got to a point where I love them, but all the reading I did during my commute stopped. And so... <laughs> All the reading I did, most of the reading I did, was during the summer when I had weeks off work and school and I was like away from the internet so I couldn't even download the podcasts as, as they were being released and so I just didn't read much. Um, and then I had the issue of like having mandatory reading or have or being very, feeling very overwhelmed and that didn't help because I got stuck in a lot of books. Basically in 2019 I read 16 books. My goal on Goodreads, as always, because that's what I keep trying to do, is to read at least 30. Why did I set it to 30? Because there was one year, I don't remember which one, just, to, just so you can understand my problem. I said I I I got there. I I read 32, and so I keep trying to like do the same thing I did that year, and I mean, between then and now, <laughs> it's been a bachelor's, a master's now, and a new, new job. So I I guess those things also you know influence. But that being said, <laughs> this year it was like the worst reading year for me since I've started watching BookTube and since I moved to Brazil and back and so my content felt it, my content on Instagram felt it and I felt it because I miss reading and I miss being engaged with books because when I was reading I was loving it. So I'm gonna talk to you about the books I've read during 2019. I know we are in February. I don't care, That's this is when I got time. So we're gonna go into the books. I'm gonna tell you the rating I gave them and my highlights of the year even though I read a few books, some of them did really stand out. So, here we go. So the first book I read was Jill Mansell's This Could Change Everything. I read it on my Kindle, I mean my tablet, with uh, but through Kindle. And this was a very feel-good, very sweet story. I had read Jill Mansell before, in Portuguese, translated. And so I hadn't actually read her voice in English and how she actually sounded and her, like her actual tone. And it feels, uh, it was really funny, because her translations are actually very well done, so, which is cool. Uh, the covers are a bit romantic, they used to be more like rom-com, like funny ones, now they're a bit more romantic. In Portuguese, she has changed publishers, so if you're Portuguese, you won't, you won't read the same editions I've read before, but that's okay. Besides the point for anyone that's not Portuguese, but for those that are. That being said, it's not, so I read it to compare in terms of tone, with Sophie Kinsella as well, because reading Jill Mansell in Portuguese was what led me to read Sophie Kinsella in English. And I really enjoyed it. I did feel, in this particular novel, I don't know if this happens in a lot of them, but I, I do remember she usually has a, a bigger cast of characters. A lot of rom-com style books, uh, a lot of chiclet books focus on the main character. But Jill Mansell usually likes to have a bigger range of characters, like the whole town or like, like five people around town they all connect because of like these businesses and they're or family and stuff so what and this happens here but it's in london so i love the setting i love the little neighborhood the characters are very sweet uh the romance was actually really funny um and it was like i i saw it coming but it was cute there was another couple though that was a bit i don't know i i just I felt that we could have more focus on one on one couple and just the help of the other ones. But instead, we would have 
a longer book and we would have more, like everyone got more development. That being said, I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars, it was very enjoyable. I think I will, like, when I need something, like, light and to pick me up from my reading slumps and stuff, I will pick up Jill Mansell if I don't have any Sophie Kinsella to read, because I'm running out of Sophie Kinsella books very quickly. Then I read one of my highlights of that year, and that was very surprising for me, and that was The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yun. Now, Nicola Yun is a YA author, she also wrote Everything Everything, and I really enjoyed that book. Some people don't like it because of the twist, I love the twist, I love how she writes and the type of chapters she does, she does a lot of chapters, very, it's very quick and very easy to read and to stop and to pick up again. And in the Everything Everything she does sketches and there's a lot of like drawings from the main character and in this one you get little snippets of other people's perspectives around the main characters. And you have two main characters, uh, which you probably know about because this book has been very hyped up on booktube for a lot of years, Natasha and Daniel. And I loved the background uh, of the characters, I how informative this is as well, like the hit you give, like it kind of gives you a lot of information, it makes you feel for the characters. I think it's very well done in that regard. And the love story, it's very hard to sell to some people, I am aware, but I think the book is aware of it, like it's aware of itself. The last, last, last scene though, it warmed my heart to bits. I loved this book, it was so beautiful, so beautifully written, I love all the different perspectives, I love all the family dynamics, it's so good and it's not just cute, you know, it's YA contemporary at its best. And I really, really enjoy Nicola Yoon's books. If she releases more books, I'll probably pick them up and read. The way she writes, I think it's kind of the YA books that, that I can read for longer. I, I can be older and still enjoy YA if it's this type of YA. And I'm really excited to be able to keep enjoying YA as I get older because I am now 24 and I feel like sometimes YA is slipping through my fingers and I've bought a lot of YA books that I haven't read. and. And yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to keep up with YA. So that was my second book of the year. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. Again, uh, the only kind of weakness, and it's not really a weakness, it's the insta-love aspect. I think it, it's very hard to look past how cheesy the element is, but the rest of the story, like everything around it is beautiful. Then I picked up the trilogy to end all trilogies in YA Contemporary to be honest, and that is the To All The Boys I've Loved Before trilogy by Jenny Han. Fun fact, I had read To All The Boys I've Loved Before and P.S. I Still Love You in ebook format. And what I do tend to do and I try to do is some books that I'm not sure if I'm gonna like ever want to reread or if they're not gonna age well in my shelves, I try to buy them on ebook, especially now with YA. Since the movie came out, uh, everyone is talking about this. I've been trying to see if I was gonna buy the ebook for the third one or actually buy the physical copy but I hate having books that are from a series not with together with its trilogy so I just picked it up from Book Depository so I have all the three books uh, here you go um, so you have To All The Boys I've Loved Before P.S. I Still Love You and then Always and Forever Laura Jean and they keep going shorter in size and in story as well. The first book is so good. It's, it's such a solid read. It's so enjoyable. The characters are so real and the relationship between the sisters is so enjoyable to read and so adorable but also so complicated at times, especially between Margot and um, Laura Jean, of course. The romance is cute. It's unproblematic. So it's really good. The second one... <laughs> I was very engaged when I was reading the second time around. I was younger when I read the first time, of course, uh, and I was very Team Peter at the time. So I was just like, go away, John Ambrose. And now, um, the second time I read it, I was actually like, wow, this this guy is top notch. Like John Ambrose McLaren. He's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He has a lot of values, but he's also very like. It's, you know, like, he has some moves. I think the problem is she is still in high school. We don't know if this is ever going to be, like, her, like, one true love 
this is it for her or if she like goes to university find someone else and that's what kind of the book tries to expand uh, the third book but the third book I thought so this is always in forever Laura Jean and the third book I thought lacked plot because I read this when I was much older and, and because she's almost at university I got very angry with both of them so with Laura Jean and Peter because it felt like the whole plot was just a very big lack of communication. Oh my god, I get it, it's very real, but it's so annoying in books. It's so... in books, like, actual conflict works so much better than communication conflict. Like, so that being said, and I know I'm very, being very, like, unarticulated about this, uh, I gave 5 out of 5 stars to all the boys I loved before, it's such a solid read. I gave four stars to P.S. I Still Love You and I gave three stars to Always and Forever Laura Jean. That being said, this is a very, very loved series and I just, I love having them on my shelf. They make me smile and I, I think, you know, if I ever want to reread them, I can. So then I read 20 Girls by Sophie Kinsella. Here I am again reading my favorite, one of my favorite authors. Sophie Kinsella always, you no, know, brings a smile to my face. It's so funny. It's so heartwarming. I love reading her books. This is not her most recent one at all. I did enjoy it, but it's very weird. Like, it's not what I was expecting. It's not the type of story she tells. It's not as realistic, of course, because the whole plot is about this great, great aunt's ghost that, like, she can see and talk to her and like help her out in life. I didn't find it as funny most of the time. There is a point where it picks up and when it and when it picks up and it becomes a rom-com again. I loved it. So I gave it four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I, I just love Sophie Kinsella. It's very it's very easy to read, but it's it has such a warm heart. This wasn't my favorite of hers. I wouldn't recommend starting with this one, but I did enjoy it, so there we go. Now, next, we have two ebooks. And for some reason this year, when I did pick up ebooks, I read them really fast. I guess it's very easy to read ebooks because you don't see the page count, which helps. So the next book I have is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary is this really fun, really adorable book. It's about two characters that share an apartment, share a bed, everything, but they never meet each other because one works during the day and one works during the night. He has a girlfriend, she has a very creepy boy ex-boyfriend that she's basically trying to run away from. I had no idea how dark this book would turn, like there is a very interesting plot line in this story, very necessary. For I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars, I really really enjoy it. I do tend to evaluate books in regards to what they are trying to be, or what I expect them to be, and not like... <laughs> I give 5 out of 5 stars of, to Jane Austen's books, yes. And I give 4.5 to this book, yes. I'm not saying they are worth, like, they are the same quality. I am saying that this type of book, this is a very good example of this type of book. It took such a serious turn, but it's also very heartwarming, very cute, very funny. The meet, when they actually finally meet, you're just waiting for that moment to happen. It's so further down the line. Like, and it's so funny. It's a very, very cute story, and I really enjoy reading it, and I've been praising it to everyone. Then I read a book. I love the person that wrote it. Um, but I cannot say I like the book. So Amazon on my tablet is not opening up, so I'm gonna have to show you on my phone. Uh, but my phone screen is cracked, so you're just gonna have to bear with me um, while I <laughs> while I try to show you the cover of the next book. The next book is All That She Can See by Carrie Hope Fletcher. Let me see if this can show you the actual cover. Here's the thing. I was just trying to avoid Reading books by people, people I, I follow on the internet, I don't usually go for the YouTubers books unless it's like a biography. And I really enjoyed Carrie Hope's Fletcher biography that she wrote a long time ago. It felt very honest and very cute and I really, really enjoyed that. The light is going out, but I, I will keep talking. But this book, it's so... the, the writing is very middle grade -ish. But then the story takes a turn for the violent. It's very weird because the plot I was expecting something like cute, romantic, quirky, but like 
contemporary like in the real world and then this, this takes a turn for the magic world that's not magical realism it's like dystopian why right? <laughs> like dystopian it's YA but it but the writing style is not YA because it's very easy and it repeats a lot of things and it's just maybe it wasn't the right book to start with maybe it's her worst one I don't know I just know I'm gonna stay away from her books because as a person and as like a YouTuber and as a, an actress I really admire her and I really like her content online and I really like her message to the world so I'm just gonna avoid her books because I think they're not for me uh, I gave it two stars and so I'm just gonna move on uh, because I'm not here to you know throw anyone under the bus but there we go then I tried to participate in the Reading Rush, which was previously named the Booktubeathon. Dare say I tried because I, I was working during that week and so it didn't work very well. I read one book completely and I fin I started one that I finished like two days afterwards. So I'm still counting that for myself. The first one was the one I read completely and it like completed a lot of challenges because I watched the movie and all of those things. I had to change a little bit of the, the, the light, so sorry. So the next one I read was Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. This is sort of a fictionalized account of her life. This is about a girl that when people around her find out she's gay, send her to a camp, you know, to be saved. It's heartbreaking. It's, it makes you so mad. How? How do these camps exist? The movie is very good as well, but it's just a snippet of the book. I would highly recommend, if you have watched the movie, to read the book. It's so dark, it's, it's so heartbreaking, but it does have hope at the end of it. And it's such an important read for a lot of people that do not understand what LGBT people go through with families like the one she, this, car, this character had. Beautiful book though, very well written. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. The half star was bec was due to the lack of closure at the, at the end of the story. I do like my stories to have closed endings, so or like epilogues, or at least something. I know a lot of people wouldn't care for that, that wouldn't matter. I do like my, my stories with like a little hint of a closure. I wanted story arcs to be more finished, but Overall, and now that's been like six months after I read it, what the book left me with was a lot of information and a lot of anger. And I think that's the aim as well. And so I really recommend you read The Message Education of Cameron Post. The next book I read was Homegoing by Yagi Asi. And this was a highlight in 2019. Like, I've been mentioning this book to so many people. It's so good, guys. Why did I wait so long? Like, this, I bought this book when I was in Erasmus in 2017. I hadn't picked it up since, uh, but I just kept like looking at it and like, I have to read this. It's so good. It tells the story of how the story of a family gets broken up and destroyed and er erased by the slave trade. It's so important. I've heard some very valid critics about how you, because you get a chapter to each character, you don't connect so much with the characters. And I get that, but yes, I would like to you know, go learn more about this character. Some characters were not so interesting, but I think that's part of it. You're not getting the full story of any character. You're getting snippets of when they kind of feel like they lost trace of their history or where they learned that a piece of information that was missing. So beautifully written, so beautifully thought, thought out, so poetic. I keep recommending it to people. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It was like the best book of the year. Uh, really, really, really enjoy that. So the next one was The Improbability of Love by Anna Rothschild. This book was a surprise. I had bought it a few years ago, hadn't picked it up yet. I knew it was kind of about the, like, the art world, but it's very sarcastic, it's very analytical, very about the inner workings of high society in London. That is ridiculously, ridiculously rich. Um, I, I, however, I was not expecting the crime aspect of the story. I was hoping for a love story that just left a lot to be desired, and there was a lot of details, a lot about about a lot of stuff 
oh, about a lot of characters at the end I didn't need. I gave it 4 stars uh, because it's a 3.75 out of 5 stars read for me. However, she has a new book that has come out and that might be interesting. I'm not saying I won't, I won't read it, I think it will be interesting. Don't go into it like I did, expecting a, a great love story at the center of it. Because it doesn't have it. And the title of the book is the title of a painting. The story of the painting, though. It's very good and it's very interesting. And I just, I love that part. Like, the painting speaks to you. And that's a very interesting aspect of the book. The painting sees who owns it and, like, sees the life around it. And analyzes them and, like, critiques them. And it's, it's a very judgmental painting. But it's so funny that painting had a very interesting life. And it's very cool to, like, read about that. So those were during summer. And we are still going. Like, I read most of what I read last year during summer. Next we have Leviathan but by Scott Westerfield. This is volume one of the Leviathan series, I think. This is a steampunk middle grade story that reinvents and reimagines a uh, First World War. You still have the Germans versus the British. You still have, like, the same political aspects of it. But then you have... There, there's a genetical slash uh, mechanical aspect to that, like different philosophies about how engineering and how science should develop. It's very imaginative, very cool. This is a translated edition. It's very illustrated. When you say Rick Riordan is middle grade, that's why I read Rick Riordan in English. And I think you you feel, I don't know if it's a translation, you do feel a bit like this book was translated for children. That being said, I think it's a very imaginative, very cool book. And I, I am interested in reading more of the story. I gave it four and a, four out of five stars. I was very good this year for my books. Like, I gave a lot of people four stars because they were very enjoyable to the ones that, you know, deserve that. So, for me, this was a four, four stars book. It was very enjoyable. I'm maybe not the audience for it anymore, but now that I have it, I'm going to try and read it. And I can appreciate it for what it is, which is a very, very cool retelling of the First World War. Very imaginative, very cool. I keep repeating the same words, guys, because I'm very tired by now of speaking. But it's cool, it's cool, we're cool. So then, we're almost there. Then I finished the book that I've been meaning to finish since the beginning of 2019. And this was around August, September. And that was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. And this is a translated edition because, because when I learned about this book, I thought it was a sci-fi novel, which kind of is, but kind of isn't. And I thought I might I like the Portuguese edition. Uh, I think it's a pretty cover, and I'm gonna you know support that and get it in Portuguese. Uh, it's very well uh, translated because it is an uh, an adult novel, not a, a YA. But I was very surprised by it. Uh, it's a very confusing story. It's very poetic, uh, very beautiful. It reminded me of the Fifth Wave a lot. It's very dystopian. But it wasn't what I was expecting. I gave it four stars. It was an enjoyable read. Um, the, the the writing style is very good. But um, I don't I don't feel like it concluded like completely. <laughs> Again, I really like endings. This book doesn't do that a lot. Um, so that that was a bit of an issue for me. But yeah, it was a very enjoyable read, and it's very well written. So check it out if you want to. So now I'm going to one of the last books I read this year, and that was. Uh, Will Grayson, Will Grayson by John Green and David Levithan. I read this in, around September. I really enjoyed it. It's a very enjoyable read. I love this story because it kind of joins two authors I really enjoy reading. They have, like, it's very, like, you can tell, I can tell which one, which story is each author. Uh, and you can tell too because they actually say it at the end of the book. But it's kind of, you, you can tell. Mostly because of the type of story it's, it's writing. Because I think the writing style really, really works together. And I really like the book. I gave it... Let me check Goodreads. And I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. And I really enjoyed this book. And now I just have to read the, the Turtles all the way down to have read all of John Green's books, which is insane. And last, but certainly not least, is the last book I read this year. I read it for classes. But oh boy, this book. I read A Room of One Zone by Virginia Woolf. This little white book that's a very beautiful edition. This is a Penguins, Penguins Books Great Ideas series. It's a very cool series. It's very, very well done. Very beautiful covers. This for me was a 4.5. 
75 stars book. It's so good. That ending, I, I, this never happens to me with books, but the ending made me cry because I was reading aloud to myself and it made me cry. And this never happens. And non-fiction, how can non-fiction make you cry like this? But it did. I've just found that I really like Virginia Woolf. You can tell the points where it's outdated, but at one point she kind of goes over the outdatedness. It becomes not dated again. It's very interesting, very cool, uh, and very important to read if you want to understand why she's such an influence to second wave feminism, which was, was what we were analyzing in class. But I just, I really found an appreciation for Virginia Woolf reading this book after reading Mrs. Dalloway a, f a couple years ago. And so, yeah, really enjoyed that. Then it's going, but I just wanted to tell you about the two books that I started and didn't finish. I've mentioned this book in this channel, I think, but I picked up a bound up of the three books that create the memories of the Eagle and Jaguar by Isabel Allende in Spanish. And I started reading it in Spain when I was in vacation there in September. Now, because of classes and work, I didn't pick it up since. Like, I haven't finished it. I'm still, like, halfway through the first book. But I love Isabel Allende. And I'm really enjoying reading it in Spanish. Like, I can understand it. So that's... I'm happy. I will continue to read this. I'm just trying to pick up some pace. And I have some books to read. But I'm... I'm, I'm really enjoying it and um, can't wait to continue reading this. And the other book I was trying to read, also a rereading, uh, but this time it's the actual book I've read the first time, and that is Looking for Alaska by John Green. The mini series that came out in October is so good, it's such a faithful, so it's such a perfect adaptation of the book. I loved it so much. Because it's eight episodes, they had so much time to expand the world, expand the characters, give us more information about characters that we don't have information about, but to be so truthful to the characters we do know and love so well. But then you have so much more information about like the teachers, you learn so much more about Laura and everything. And so I, I love the show so much that I picked up the book again. Because I just want to cry a little bit. I'm halfway through. But I would recommend, actually, and I don't usually say this, Read the book first, like reread or read the book first and then watch the show because you will miss, like, you will be reading and being like, where is that part where, oh, that's something in the show? I, oh wow, like, they added a lot of stuff, very good stuff. Uh, John Wayne was involved in the process and I'm so happy with that show. I'm so, so glad it exists in the world and I'm, I cried so much. And so I'm trying to reread the book, but it's taking a while and because I had mandatory reading, uh, I had to put it on hold. So, that's it. This video is very, very long. I am very tired of talking. The sun has gone down. It's gone. I'm I'm orange by now. But, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I hope 2020 works much better for me in terms of reading. I am trying. I truly, truly am. To read more this year. I hope you enjoyed your reading and I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me in the comments what was your favorite book of 2019. In terms of like stories that stayed with me. Homegoing and Mr. Christian of Cameron Post really stayed with me. A Room of One Zone at the end of the year really, you know, kind of brought a new appreciation for me for, for Virginia Woolf, so I'm really happy I read it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up or subscribe down below, and I hope to see you soon with a new video. Very soon. Bye. It's so dark. I'm so sorry. I just, I kept talking.